Hey guys, what is going on? This is Zip of Rage Quit TV casting a game between White Row spawns as the Red Protoss and Patak spawning as the Blue Zerg. And many people may not know who Patak is. He is a Croatian Zerg player and known as one of the best Croatian players. And he has been that way for a long time. He comes up from Brood War, winning WCG qualifiers of Croatia since 2005. This guy has a long history along with White Raw, so two old school Brood War players going to be duking it out on Antigua Shipyard. And I have to give the advantage to White Raw off the start just because it is Antigua Shipyard. I mean, the Zerg, they can take these three bases, and then every other base is so hard for them to take. They can't really hold this gold whatsoever because this high ground right next to it. And then taking bases in any corners could be bad with Warp Prism Blade because that is what White Raw loves to do. He is going to be throwing down a pylon up here, and this is a little bit odd. This is going to be a big wall. He's going to wall this off and go for a Faz Expand. Generally, I see them try to do the wall at the bottom, but then again, there's really nothing to easily wall with. I think you can still do it. I've seen people do it before. I don't know why White Raw is going for that ramp, but hey, he knows better than me. And uh, we have the gas coming up for Patak, and this gas is at 14 supply. Gonna go for a 14 gas, 14 pool, an early speedling opener, and this is not good against a Forge Fast Expand. And Patak is gonna send his overload over to Scout, and uh, well, it's gonna be too late for him to do anything. He may pull drones off of gas when he sees that Forge. Because you can have speedlings, but they're not going to be doing too much of anything. Maybe because he's walling off over here, he could do some damage. But chances are White Raw will be able to have this walled off. And a Photon Cannon with uh, a wall does pretty good against Lings. So we'll see exactly what Patak does. He could always fake that he's going to an Expo. And go for a Baneling Bust because Banelings will come out before centuries. If the Protoss is doing this fast expand build and uh, you can just blow up a pylon then run all your lings in. It is a little bit of an all in but with what wall off White Raw is doing that is very much a possibility. And he has taken his guys off gas but that is after he gets exactly a little over 100 gas. And the overload is coming sees the pylon back here. This is a big opening. White Raw is getting his nexus. We do have speed on the way with uh, four lings and one drone. He is going to be going for a 21 hatch. Or well, maybe not. Generally I see the speed expand expanding around 21 and Patak, he is going to be going above that possibly. Let's see, he has lava. Is he going to be building something else? No, he is going to be expanding at 21. It doesn't work out as I'm used to seeing it, but hey, it worked out just fine. The queen is going to be vomiting and White Raw has one cannon up. A gateway is on the way. And Patak can't really put on too much aggression. And when I said earlier, it's not good against a Forge Faz Expand. It's not that bad. Speedling is always good. But it's just not ideal. If I was in Patak's situation, I would not have got the speed research. I would have thrown down the hatch a little bit earlier. Because really, what is speed going to be doing? We'll see if he does anything with that speed. But chances are it's going to be finishing. And he's not going to do anything with it. So might as well just not get this. Get the hatch up a little earlier. Because you know the Protoss is not going to be doing anything funky. The one probe does go down. White Raw doesn't have any forward pylons out. We have a gas deal, but White Raw still has gases down at this base, so that gas deal is not going to harm him too much. The Cyber Next Core has now just started to be built. The probe is chilling out right here until the Zealot comes out, so any Ling aggression just doesn't happen. And I think White Raw, he did see the Speedling research was being re uh, was active, or the spawning pool was pumping that vein, so he knows speed is done, so he may be thinking his opponent is going to be doing some type of aggressive push, but Patak not going to be doing that, getting his second gas already. This is a little bit early for the second gas. We don't see him at Lair Tech just yet. I'm kind of curious what he is going to be going into. He has a few lings just running around the map, just got scouting information, looking for any forward pylons, and now he's going to be chilling out the bottom of the ramp with just four lings. This is enough to kill a zealot, but White Raw is going for a plus one timing. And with that gas deal on this one, Overlord, he is just poking in, see if he can see anything. No, he does not have that good of information, but White Raw isn't doing anything. And Patak is at 480 minerals right now. Going to be getting that lair at 6 minutes and 30 seconds, and this is very early for a lair, I believe. And just getting more drones. Maybe it's not very, very early, but I just... With the second gas being earlier than I'm used to seeing, this lair has to be a little bit earlier. 
and he's still floating about 300 minerals so I'm kind of curious what he is going to be doing maybe waiting for both of these injects to stop this queen needs to inject and there it goes why do I is building four more uh, three more gates the fourth is already up getting another gas and I think he's just gonna be gearing up to do some type of plus one move out and he may build a robo facility next and no that's another gateway so he's gonna be up at five gates and we'll see exactly what he does I just say robo facility because it is white raw and I know he does love that warp prism to play we have plus one now just uh, about a minute away from completion or 30 seconds depending if he chrono boost it out or not we have a spire being built already and I'm gonna go out on a wing and say this is early because the spire is gonna be finishing around uh, nine minutes and 30 seconds the meters will be out around 10 minutes and that's what you get in a ZVT and generally the meters come out a lot earlier in ZVTs than ZVPs so we'll see exactly he is still only off four gases and he really needs to get that muter count very high to deal the damage but maybe he's hoping white raw goes for a warp prison play as this would definitely hard counter it and there's only sentries out so the few muters that Patak's going to be building is definitely going to be good and this is what this early gas does help with that he just has so much gas at this point even though he's on two base he's going to be banking up around 800 gas when that spire does finish and uh, be able to do quite a bit of damage it looks like. White Rod does have five whoop gates up. Keep that in mind so that circle count can go extremely high very quickly. And the Spire now about 10 seconds away from completion. He has an 800 gas so he is going to be building around 8 mutas. As soon as that completes you see 57 out of 84 supply. He has been waiting for that Spire to complete. And there we go 8 mutas on the way. We'll see what White Raw's next round of weapons is. Nine meters now on the way. He has plus one armor. Does have that Robo facility. Getting an observer. Getting a Twilight Council. And that's going to be so good for him. As you need Blink Stalks to deal with meters early on. Because especially when White Raw's taking all these bases. He just needs to be able to get between them with Blink. And we see the ex Ninja Expand down here. I don't hate this just because it is Antigua Shipyard. It's so hard to take a fourth base. It can go down anywhere you take it very easily so might as well take it in a place that can put white raw out of position and we do see him getting a warp prism now the meter is going to be coming in there are four pylons pounding these gates so that's not going to do any damage the probes have been pulled already and two have gone down three four five go down it looks like and now the stalkers is coming the meters have to back out white raw is now getting warp gate research and where is that warp prism it is over here has one zealot and more mutas on the way so Patak is just going to be massing mutas it looks like and we'll see if White Rod has an answer to this that muta count is getting pretty high and the pilot is going down and about this ninja expand I just realized he didn't take this space yet I don't like the ninja expand I would rather have, him have that one close space and now the muta is just trying to pick off that sentry count but he did lose quite a few going this lost tab he is behind and a warp prism is on the way. White Rock controls this watchtower. But the mutas are coming. Will they go and pick that zealot off? It doesn't look like that. And White Rock now knows all the mutas coming. His stalkers are already going into position. He needs to clear that one watchtower. And we'll see what Patak does. There are plenty of stalkers just waiting for him. Was going for that assembly and decides, okay, that is not a good idea. And the warp prism now with four zealots is on the way. Keep in mind, the zealots are at 1-1. One, one. And we have a lot of spine claws right here just waiting for units to come in. But they're going to be coming in through the back door. And P Patak may not be ready for the warp prison play that's coming down now. Four zealots do go down. This one hatch may have to be canceled. The mutas have to pull back. He is trying to take that one pylon and he is going to be getting it. White Rod does not get supply cap though. 113 out of 134. This hatch looks like it will be going down. But those mutas are coming back. The warp prison and all the zealots will fall. Uh, maybe the warp prism will be able to get away. And the zealot doesn't go down, but the spine claws will take it. And will he be able to hunt down this spine uh, warp prism? Everything is going. The meters are splitting right now, trying to cover as much area as they can. We'll find this one zealot. And the warp prism is coming back with two more zealots going to try to cancel this hatch yet again. Very nice duke by White Rod. All these meters were out of position, and the zealots may actually get the cancel off. Is getting very low, and yes, the hatch does get cancelled. The drone is going to go back down by the spine callers. Now the muta is going to be charging after this. One muta has been chasing this. 
White Rod does have Blink and Blink's in underneath the Mutas. A lot of the Mutas are going down now. And they are backing off and loses a lot of Mutas right there. I think that was about four Mutas he lost. Nice Blink from White Rod. And he is still at 1-1, one, one, going for plus two weapons. We have plus two melee attack, plus two flying attack, and plus one care base on the way for Patak. And the food is relatively even. The Mutas attacking the Photon Cans. One does go down, but a few Mutas do fall yet again. He cannot just keep sacrificing these Mutas. White Raw has plenty of Stalkers just everywhere defending against these Mutas. The count is 26 Stalkers to 14 Mutalisks. That is definitely not good for Tak, but he is going into a lot of links. Has plenty of Spine Crawlers. And I think it may be beneficial for him to skip out on some spine calls and take bases around the map. You can see him really getting high on minerals and not too high on gas. Part of that goes down to the two cancels right here on this one hatch. But Patak really needs to get more Vespane geysers up just so he has um more gas because his minerals are definitely getting high. He doesn't even need to like gimp on these spine calls. He just needs to build hatches all over the map. But control these mutas does take a lot of focus. And uh, that's what he is focusing on, it looks like. And more mutas coming out. 154 supply to 158. The upgrades are relatively even. White Rose at 2 1. Patak his ground. We have all his links at, at the middle of this on the washout at 1 1. But that plus 2 is just about finished. We have a Dark Shine being built by White Raw. And with the Warp Prism, this can do quite a bit of damage. Just because three DTs can take out a hatch before an Overseer can get more. So, that will definitely be bad. The Mutas do come in, try and get some harassment done. They were attacking that one Photon Cannon. Again, a lot of Mutas did fall. Going to this Worker Kill Count, he has killed seven probes. That does not make all of these Mutas worth it. And we do have a Templar Archives up, so he is going to be switching into Archons. And possibly even storms. And once he gets storms, these lanes are definitely just going to be falling. The food count's still even, but I have to give this game in favor of White Raw right now. Pataka is going to be going up on his fifth base. But he is just behind in the tech. Lings aren't going to do good against High Templars or even Urkons for that matter. Three Urkons are being morphed. And that is plus three weapons about three quarters of the way done. Those Urkons will be a whoop the zerglings and we also have a duck shine and looks like the archons can knock it out so they're gonna be having to kill this one warp gate and he is getting armor upgrades as well so three two very near for white raw while patak still at two one but he is researching plus two care pace plus one care pace on his flying and taking another hatch this is what he needed to do much earlier i think he has Stopped White Raw from moving out, so if he was on six bases, that'd be so good. And now White Raw's moving out with a depth big and scary. Um, you can see the supply is relatively even. 113 for White Raw, 105 for Patak. But the like cost of the army, White Raw has more minerals and more gas, a lot more minerals. So Patak definitely in trouble. But now, since White Raw has moved out, the Mutas can come in. Going to be picking off these cannons very easily. And White Raw is going to be splitting up his units. You can see the Stalkers coming back. And a few Stalkers are going to be coming up with a few Archons. There's a lot of Spine Callers. The Mutas are going to be falling back. Lings don't want to engage just yet. One Archon does go down. That is a win for Patak. And White Raw just going to be looking around. And where do those Mutas go? They are back at home. We do have more Lings being built. And he is just going to be taking out these Destructible Rocks. But more Spine Callers have been built. This is so many Spine Callers up for Patak has 15 of them and looks like zealots did take out this one hatch a bunch of lings are coming in and now the mutas are coming in going to target that one archon down lings doing a lot of damage but those archons taking out those lings relatively quickly and now the archons are attacking the mutas and that is not what you want especially when they are clumped up mutas do kind of pull back and now he's going to try to take out those archons but did you see that clump of mutas fall that was devastating, and White Raw getting a few more Archons with more cannons, taking this fourth base. And these Spine Claws pick off one Archon immediately, now going to be getting that second Archon. Aggressive Blink of those stocks wants to take out their Spine Crawlers. Going to this unit station, we do have 40 Lings and 29 Mutas, 30-some Lings. He is attacking this gold base, but those cannons are enough to defend it. He needs to kill this one Pylon, 
But he is going for those cannons. This third base is going to be falling for Patak. And White Rod's pulling some units back. So this third base for White Rod does go down, so both players do lose that third. Patak does have the Ninja e Expo up near the, I guess that'd be 11 o'clock. And he is going in, taking out all of those cannons. Now going in for this middle line. Patak doing a lot of damage with these Mutas. Going into the count is 33 Mutas to the 19 Stalkers and 2 Urkons. So the Mutas may be able to win this straight up if he can catch White Rod's army not in the best concave. And there we go, a few Stalkers going to be going down, but the Stalkers do blink. And the Mutas should be pulling back, and there we go, the Mutas do pull. You can see a lot of them are injured. The Stalkers pulling back, but now he is going to be going in for this gold base. The Stalkers wasted the blink, so they have to take the scenic route over to this gold base. The Stalkers will be getting picked off. The pylon goes down. Now those cannons are out of the picture. Another pylon is being built. Nice blink of that one Stalker. Patak controlling these Mutas very well. And the Mutas now just going about. Going to be trying to magic box these Urkons down. One does go. The Muta count those 16 to 17 Stalkers. He needs to build more Lings, I think. He has been going into this main base. But there are plenty of cans that Muta count definitely has went down. He was in the 20s just a moment ago. And would be really cute if he did a Ling run by on this side. But next, we said no more Stalkers for you. And then just masked up Mutas. We'll see if that's what he is thinking. A bunch of those do come. This one base is going to be taken out. And Patak no longer really mining. He has just a few minerals left on this base. Probably around 1,200 minerals left. So he has to guilt another hatch as he's already doing. And now the Zelda's going to be trying to take out that one hatch. Going to force the Mutas. Uh, no, the Zelda's are just going to be pulling back. And Patak is going to come in here. Has three Mutas. Now the rest of them do come. Those cannons just a waste of resources. White Rod does cancel a lot of them, though. This Nexus is under fire. We do have Stalkers pulling back to try to defend this. But that is not happening. The Mutas now going to be taking out some more pylons, it looks like. And now the Stalkers do blink. But the Mutas may be able to take them out. And it looks like the Mutas know that. So they're going to start attacking those. The Guardian Shield does go up. And Archon does come. More Stalkers are being whooped in. So there's Mutas. You have to go back, but they're going to take the double damage on the Stalkers morphing in before they leave. Patak with some great Muta control, but in the meantime, these Zealots did come back, take out this third base yet again. I don't know if that got cancelled. I don't think it does as he's at 80, 90 minerals, but he is building three Muta, so it's very well. He did get the cancel and just build more Muta lists. And you can see 130, 90, 105, 145, so he's around 400 minerals left at that natural. I guess his main still has around uh, 500, maybe, at most. But White Rod, very happy with this gold base. And this is something that Zerg just cannot do. It's so hard to defend the bases beyond this third base, even though he's lost this base quite a lot. I mean, he just can't defend any other base. And that is why a lot of Zergs just dislike Antigua Shipyards. And now this one is similar, going to be trying to focus it down because that will halt the Archon production. Nice magic box on that Archon, that thing does go. And Patak just going to be backing up. He has enough Mutas, I think, to kill those Stalkers, but he is just going to be backing off. And now this base is going up yet again. The Observer is going to be seeing that. But that Muta count has definitely gotten high enough. The base over here is going up. White Rod splitting his Stalker count again with some Archons. Two Archons and a bunch of Stalkers at each base. Now Patak cannot go and harass this third base. And oh my god, does he have a lot of whoop gates. Well, maybe that's not a lot, but man. All in one place. And now he's just going to try to pick off a few probes. Going in for these stalkers. Sees those archons and going to be backing off. And uh, looks like he is pulling back. There is... Still that one observer watching this third base. Now Patak can finally start mining again. It is 107 supply to 128. So this game is still very close. But these Mutas are getting low in the HP. And those Archons will be taking out clumps at a time. And that is something that is never good. Two DTs going to be trying to take out this one hatch. But the Mutas do come back in time to clean house. And Patak, he has 27 Mutas versus only 16 Stalkers. So he is very much still in this one game. It looks like that Queen did transfuse something, maybe a Mutalisk. And that changing was at the Watchtower. And White Rod doesn't have all his fours in one spot. There are six Archons out. But now there's Mutas going to be coming in. Pick off a few Stalkers right now. 
and gonna be backing off a blink comes out from White Raw. And Batak still showing that he has complete map control, but those Archons get a big volley off on a lot of those mutas. They take so much damage when you turn them around from Archons if they're inside of range. And now it looks like White Knight just wants to go in, take this hatch out again. If this hatch does go down, that will be GG. Those mutas are clumped up, and oh my god, look at that damage! Oh no! Oh! Oh my god, there goes the GG. Man. That hurts. Wow. And oh, uh, just a little bit of chat. And for you guys that don't know, if, don't know if I said that in this cast, Patak is actually Croatian for duck. It's actually Patak, I think, is Croatian for duck. It is a typo. It's supposed to be P A T K, but he's just lived with that one typo and White Raw taking out all the drones while they talk. Those drones die in vain. They don't get anything. There goes the second GG. Very minute. Now he has left the game, but let's look at that one battle again. Let's just watch this Muta count and see if White Raw has all his forces. Uh, back a little more. We're almost there. There we go. Oh, uh, one more. There we go. This is before the battle. The Yomi size White Raw is definitely in the lead. There's no doubt about that. It is 22 Mutas versus 13 Stalkers, 6 Archons. And there are a few DTs back here. Looks like two of those Archons and quite a few of those Stalkers. That's two Archons and 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 Stalkers. So he has 5 Stalkers up here. Is that correct? Yes. 5, st uh, 6 Stalkers. Man, I can't do math. And 3 Archons. Uh, 4 Archons. So I think those mutas, if they weren't clumped up, may have been able to take that out. Let's just watch that in normal speed so we can see each volley. Let's see. Look at their health now. The Urkha's going to turn. Look at that damage. Oh my god, did that just drop one more time. Let's see if I can pause it just before the battle and just after. So here we go. The Urkha's coming in. You can see the mutas. Hold on. There we go. Just look at the HP down here. Ready? That looks like it's just one Urkhan shot. And that just dropped. And then again. Next volley from all those. We have three, four, five, six, seven, like eight mutas falling. He has, how many does he have left? Looks like he has 12 left. Uh, that's eight actually, so 11. Next round, he loses four. Oh, no, he lost five. So six. Yeah. I mean, that is definitely brutal. There's all kinds of so much damage in that fight, and I hope you enjoyed the cast. Uh, well, take care, guys. I'll see you next time, and peace out.